Hey guys, this is a wrestling update. You remember the vlog that I put up at the start of the year, the start of February? That was a couple of sessions into me starting wrestling. And it's now been about seven months since I've begun. So I thought it would be interesting to put up an update just to tell you what I've learned as a beginner so that you, anyone else that's interested, even the slightest in starting wrestling, can know what to expect, um, what some of the hurdles are for me, uniform, pros, cons, that kind of thing. So I filmed my session last night and I'm just going to put that up, it's going to play and I'll give you some commentary on what my experiences have been over the last seven months. Before we do that, I feel it's quite important because it is, I find it can be quite hard to communicate with you guys outside of putting up a video. I think YouTube needs to work on that. It'd be great to just have some kind of source outside of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to speak to you guys. But just to tell you an update on the Stronger Bodyweight Workout Series 2, I'm being relentless with my editing smashing that out, doing as much as I can. It's 13 weeks of footage, all training, advice, motivation, goals, all of that. It's 13 weeks and I'm editing it on my own. Lachlan is doing his own and it's just a humongous, a mountainous task. It's been incredibly unexpected that it would be that much work. I knew it would be a lot, but not that much. But just know, I appreciate your patience so much. You will not regret it when it comes out. It's gonna be the best training series you've ever seen. It's the biggest project Lachlan and myself have ever undertaken, and you won't regret it. So thanks for listening to that little bit of a spiel, and now I'm gonna put up the video. If you have any questions along the way, make sure that you comment down below if I don't address it and enjoy what I've learned from my wrestling adventure. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna be watching the rounds as we go along. This night I did three rounds. I wrestled three different people, which you'll see. This first guy here, Des, he was definitely the most experienced. I only met him on this night, but he definitely has a wrestling background. So he taught me a thing or two. But I just want to go through the basics of what I've actually been doing for seven months. So for the last seven months, I've been training wrestling classes two times a week, two or one time a week, sorry. And it's either Greco-Roman wrestling or it's freestyle wrestling. And the difference between Greco-Roman and freestyle, it's kind of akin to the difference between boxing and kickboxing. So. In Greco-Roman wrestling, you can't attack the legs. So obviously you can see here, um, this is a freestyle class. Uh, just like in boxing, you can't kick. In Greco, you can't go for the legs or use your legs to advance your position or to attack. It's all upper body. There's definitely benefits to both though. So it was Greco and freestyle each week. Each class was a 20 to 30 minute warm up and then it was technique work for 40 to 50 minutes. And then at the end, which you can see here, we were wrestling for rounds, three minute rounds most of the time. I'm pretty sure every time it was three minute rounds. So I definitely enjoyed both. Like I said, there's benefits to doing both. But if I had to choose one, I would recommend, so I'm thinking for you guys, if you only can choose between one or the other, I would say do both if you can, but if you had to choose, do freestyle. That's a personal recommendation because for me, I needed to think why am I doing wrestling? And I'm doing wrestling to improve my skills and ability in self-defense. And self-defense is being able to protect yourself in any kind of real life defense situation. And if you take away the legs out of the equation, it's just not as realistic. So it's not as beneficial. That's why I would opt for freestyle because it's teaching you single legs, double legs, and those won't be off the table in a real life situation. Saying that though, Greco-Roman does have a lot of benefits and the people that I've wrestled with who are experienced Greco-Roman wrestlers, their grip is out of this world. I mean, I'm, that's not to say freestyle wrestlers don't have a good grip, but just the way they hold onto you and can manipulate you with their gripping strength 
it's crazy. So certainly benefits to both. Moving on to the uniform. I initially started, I mean, you can see what I'm wearing there. They're tight, it's tight fitting clothing. So nothing's getting caught. Nothing's gonna risk of getting torn or just ruining setting up a skill. So I initially came into wrestling with a loose t-shirt and shorts and quickly found out that your fingers get caught in the clothing, it can choke you. And if sometimes I would go to shoot a single leg or something and my finger would get caught in my pockets and yeah, it just sucks. So very quickly I learned to wear either compression clothing or just loose fitting light clothing. Now the shoes are a big aspect of wrestling. Um, initially I had, I was barefoot, which was okay. It wasn't like there was heaps of pressure to go and get shoes as soon as I started, but I would say shoes do become quite essential if you're going to be wrestling consistently. So the shoes I have are an ASICS Matte Flex 5. They cost me about $80 Australian, and I got them about two months into wrestling. The benefits of having shoes are they let you grip the mat more, so it's much easier to set up skills to defend yourself because you're not slipping either from a sweaty surface or just because your feet slide on the material of the mat. And also when you're wrestling, sometimes people tread on your feet and it's just more comfortable having shoes on. And think of it kind of like how you have to have spikes when you are doing sprinting or you need to have lifting shoes when doing clean and jerk and squats. It was kind of like that, so definitely getting them is beneficial. This here is Chris, he's a guy I wrestled for round, I guess, you know, round two. Chris is bigger than me, I think we're, he's probably a little bit better or more experienced than I am, but this was fun too. So. Back to uniform, the, went through the shoes, the clothing, knee sleeves. So these last three, they're not really, they're not essential for the kind of thing I'm doing. For competition, yes, but for just this kind of training, not so much. The, there's knee sleeves, which sometimes when you're shooting single leg, double leg, that kind of thing, you're on your knees a lot, or if that's what you're working the whole session, uh, can wear on your knees, so sleeves just protect you in that regard. There's mouth guards. Um, I've bit my tongue or bit my lip a couple of times, but nothing, nothing serious. So I've not bought a mouth guard yet. And then ear protectors. You might find that you see some experienced wrestlers with cauliflower ears. And I've definitely had sore ears and swollen ears from doing this wrestling, but nothing that's worried me enough to get ear protectors just yet. But I'd say if you are really concerned about that, buy ear protectors when you start. Now what have I learned? The main things that I've learned in this seven months are wrestling equals control. So if, you've, if you're a good wrestler, you have the ability to control people at close distance. In UFC or mixed martial arts, a good wrestler, it gives them the ability to choose where the fight goes. Does it stay standing up? Does it go to the ground? It's their choice because they know how to move the other person around. The second thing is the importance of technique. So even though a big guy has an advantage against a smaller guy, and if you are that person, don't be fooled. That's it's a trick. If you don't know the technique, you can easily be manipulated by a smaller guy. It's all in the technique and it's all about drilling that technique. So that's the main thing I'm focusing on when I wrestle now. Yes, if you're in the bodyweight scene, you might recognize who that is. Yuri Marmestein stopped by. He's currently traveling Australia doing some of his bodyweight seminars and I convinced him to come to a wrestling class. I think he said he's done a couple of jiu-jitsu classes before, but this wrestling was new for him and he loved the session. So at the end, we made sure that we got a round in of wrestling, which was awesome fun. The last thing that I learned was the importance of cardiovascular and muscular endurance. And this is crazy stuff because I didn't respect cardio much at all. And I thought it was important to have decent cardio but it was, mine was nothing special and I didn't particularly train it. But doing wrestling, do, is, which is something where you can see in these rounds, it's going say 100% and then backing off, then 100% and then backing off. It fries you and it fries you really quick. 
So adding some more cardiovascular and muscular endurance training, it gave me a reason to see why it's important to have cardiovascular and muscular endurance. So what I've learned in the last seven months is that that's more important than I thought and I'm changing my training around to address that. Now, we can't go through this seven months and address all these positives without addressing some cons as well. So some of the cons I found with wrestling are not all of it is appropriate to a real life self-defense situation. So once you go on your back, you're pinned and if that was in competition, the match is over. And that doesn't translate to real life. And to me, that's a con because I'm trying to learn how to defend myself in real life. But that de it's definitely outweighed by all the, po all the positives for sure. And then the second con was just, I got a bout of ringworm or tinea on my arm, which sucked. It wasn't painful, it was just itchy and it stayed around for a while, which I've never had. I think it's kind of to be expected with with, with wrestling people close distance in a gym and other people use the gym. So it can be avoided if it's clean and you wear clothes that cover your whole body, but that was just a, a con for me. Might not even happen to you. What do I need to work on going forward? Well, that first guy I wrestled, Dez, he told me that I need to do stuff and set things up. When I'm like grabbing him and doing stuff, I'm just doing that to do it. And even though that's great advice, it's something that I, you just need to work on with practice. Kind of like with tumbling, that aerial awareness, you don't just have it. It's something that takes practice and practice. And that's definitely what I'll be doing going forward. And that's it so far guys, that's as much as I could condense what I've learned into a nutshell to put forward to you. Like I said at the beginning, anything I didn't address or any questions you have like Tyson, why are you getting your ass handed to you pretty much the whole time in the video when you've been doing it for seven months? Any questions I didn't answer, make sure you comment down below and I'll definitely get on top of that. So thanks so much for bearing with me in this time of somewhat video drought while I smash out the biggest project you'll ever see, Stronger Bodyweight Workout Series 2. It will be worth the wait. Thank you so much guys. Shall we do one? BANG! There is a subscribe button. Make sure you hit that if you want to see these videos direct to your feed, especially when Strong comes out. You don't want to miss that. Thank you so much and I'll see you for the next video.